Welcome to the Fidget TV Network. This is Elder Newsom. Uh, we want to welcome all of you as subscribers to our YouTube and Facebook social media channels. We just want to uh, extend our, a thank you to each and every one of our listening audience. And we want to say to the people of God, please continue to follow us as we expound on the Word of God on a weekly basis. Our air times are on Monday from 12 p.m. to 1 p.m. And on Wednesdays, we start at about 1 p.m. to 2 p.m. Please join us there weekly. On Friday, we have our prayer touch and agree hour. So if you have any prayer requests or any petitions that you'd like to have uh, connected or touch and agree with, please join us there. We hope to see you soon. So remember to subscribe and we hope to see you there. God bless you.
Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. This is your host, Delta Gregory Newsom with the Faith in God Internet TV. God bless you on today. We bring you greetings in the name of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, who is ahead of our life. And we give honor to our leadership, our pastor, and the person of Bishop Dr. Ellis Murchison, Sr. of the Pentecostal Power Church, and to Lady Paulette Murchison, and to my own lovely wife, Missionary Janice Newsom. Uh, and we give honor to God for each and every one of you that have joined uh, the broadcast today on this wonderful Wednesday. Uh, we want to uh, pick up where we left off on Monday. Uh, as we talk about, uh, there is a rest unto the people of God. And so we want to encourage uh, in these times that we're in, our, our goal is to motivate and encourage believers and saints of God and those that are becoming saints everywhere uh, to stay true to God and continue to walk in the grace of God as he uh, grows us in wisdom, knowledge, and understanding. And so we want to offer prayer for those that have uh, outspoken requests. We know there are several requests uh, that is needed um, for the body of Christ. And so we want to pray for all believers and we want to pray for especially our leadership that the Lord will continue to strengthen as well as encourage them as they continue to uh, share the gospel message and also be able to be examples to the people of God. And so that's uh, one of the key elements in these last days uh, that will keep uh, the people of God encouraged and also uh, in the doctrine uh, message of Christ, which is uh, Jesus is Lord. And so uh, we want to let everybody know that Jesus is Lord and there's only one God. But our subject today is going to be there is a rest unto the people of God because we know um, that there is uh, all types of uh, diseases, all types of afflictions and different things that are happening uh, as we uh, get older and as we continue to labor in the gospel of Christ. And so uh, we don't want anyone to lose faith or uh, lose hope because Jesus is our only hope. And sometimes discouragement do come because we're human. And that's just a human factor uh, that we all have to deal with, whether we, uh, you know, be leaders or whether we be you know, laity or whether we be parishioners or what have you, uh, we all are going through something. And so I say to the people of God, be encouraged. Uh, we love you. Stay with us today because we have some encouraging words for you through the gospel message today. And uh, we want to pray for you and your families that the Lord will bless you and uh, enrich your lives through the gospel of Jesus Christ. So let us pray. Continue to pray for me and Sister Newsom. Uh, pray for our presider, assistant presider, and the entire uh, NPPCI organization. Let us continue to pray one for another in Jesus' name. Pray for our sick, those in the hospital, our mothers, uh, Mother Heron, uh, Mother uh, Sharon Doss. Let us pray for Sister Ryer, uh, those that are on the altar, Sister Luvenia, uh, those that are tearing for the Holy Ghost. Uh, not only in our ministry, but uh, abroad in the organization. Let us pray that God will continue to add to the church daily such as should be saved. Uh, let's continue to pray that the will of the Lord be done in all of our lives, that we will be effective witnesses uh, for Jesus Christ. And so let us continue to pray for Bishop Harry Wilson. He's, uh, I believe, doing better, but let us continue to pray for him as well as Bishop Denari Williams. Uh, Let's pray for Bishop and Mother Young. Let us continue to pray for Bishop and Mother Bullock, as well as all of the bishops and pastors and their wives. Let us continue to pray for them. Let us pray for Bishop Mark Jones uh, and his family. Let's say a special prayer for Bishop Jones' mother and his family, that the Lord will continue to touch and strengthen uh, our senior Bishop Scott and their family. Let us continue to pray for the district elders, uh, District Elder Turner, uh, First Lady Turner. Let's continue to pray for the True Holiness family. 
as well as the New Mount Olive family and all of those that are part of uh, the PPC organization. So let us pray one for another in Jesus' name. Eternal God, our Savior, in the name of Jesus, Lord, as we come before thee and before thy throne of grace, we thank you, Heavenly Father, for your grace and your mercy toward us. In the name of Jesus, Father, we pray, Lord, that you would, O oh God, touch with your healing hand and those that are afflicted, those that are, have infirmities in their bodies. In the name of Jesus, we plead the blood, Lord, that you would grant healing. Hallelujah. Glory. In the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. There's power in the name of Jesus. And Father, we decree and declare it by faith in the name of Jesus, Lord, that the sick would recover. And, oh, God, those that are afflicted, oh, God, would, oh, God, be healed. And, oh, God, rejoice. Oh, God, touch in the name of Jesus. Oh, God, oh, God, oh, God, have your way. Touch in the name of Jesus, oh, God. Oh, God, brother Thomas, God, touch right now. Oh, God, touch his mother today, God. Oh, God, touch our neighbors, God, that said pray for them on today. We pray in the name of Jesus. Oh, God. Oh, God, that you will reach out and touch them, Lord, and bless their families, oh, God. Let your blood cover now in the name of Jesus. Do it for your glory. And, Father, we thank you. We forever give you glory, honor, and praise. In the name of Jesus, we pray. Help us now as we, oh, God, Humble ourselves and ask, oh God, in repentance, God, that you would forgive us, Lord, as a people. Forgive us, Lord. Have mercy upon us, oh God, as we forgive those that trespassed against us. Father, we thank you. We forever give you glory, honor, and praise, and we thank you for great deliverance, oh God, coming our way in the precious name of Jesus, we pray. Look on the George family. Touch them, God. Lord, in the name of Jesus, minister, God, oh God, peace, oh God in unity. Hallelujah. Glory to God among the people of God. And we thank you for it. And we forever give you glory in the precious name of Jesus. Look on our Bishop and First Lady, God, Bishop Murchison, Lady Paulette, God, touch them, Lord. Oh, God, continue to heal their bodies, God, and continue to strengthen them, oh, God, to continue to work in the vineyard. Oh, God, while it's yet called today, in the name of Jesus, do it for thy glory. And we thank you for it. And we give you praise. In Jesus' name, to the glory of God. Thank God. Amen and amen. Praise God. Thank you, Lord. In Jesus' name. And so we thank God for, amen, the prayer that's been prayed. And so we want to get right into the word of God. We're going to be as brief as we possibly can today. But we want to drill down a little bit deeper into the word of God to get the richness. You know, uh, anybody uh, that deal with petroleum, Base products or that uh, deals with drilling uh, for oil or natural resources, you know, the deeper you go, the better quality that you will find. And so we want to drill down a little bit deeper into the word of God that we might pull up some very, very good uh, spiritual resources through the word of God that will help enable us to be uh, not only just productive saints, but more uh, equip people of God concerning the word of encouragement that there is a rest unto the people of God. And I know discouragement is on the horizon, but I want to let you know, brothers and sisters, my friend, that trouble don't last always. Hallelujah. Glory to God. And I want to let you know, weeping may endure for a night, but joy cometh in the morning. Praise God. But while we're in the process of for the morning coming, things happen, circumstances arise, and I won't let the people of God know that there is a rest unto the people of God. And that rest, even if it don't come uh, like we think it ought to come, we can have rest right here in this life, praise God, and in the life to come. And that's the most important one is the life to come because there may be some turbulence in here, in this life rather, because Job said in Job 14, he says, man that's born of a woman is of a few days and is full of trouble. And I won't let you know, we won't escape trouble just because we're saved. Oh, glory be to God. I know you thought the minute you got the Holy Ghost, your troubles were over, but no, 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 no. We still face 
uh, challenges. We face trials, tests, and situations that may come up on us. But I won't let you know in Psalms 34 and uh, 19 there, he says, many are the affliction of the righteous, but the Lord shall deliver us out of them all. But when we look at Job 14, and I'm just quoting these scriptures, and we're going to get into the teaching aspect of it, but I'm just laying uh, uh, some scriptures out here for us to see uh, that we need to be encouraged because Job faced trials. And he says, man that is born of a woman is of a few days and full of trouble. Praise God. And so we can see that there's trouble in this life. Life is brief and we encounter trouble as we live in this life. Hmm? And Job lamented just like Jeremiah lamented for the people, hmm? for his family. Job lamented for his family and his friends just like uh, Jeremiah lamented for Judah and Israel. Praise God. I want to tie something in here. Uh, sometimes sickness come, loneliness come, disappointment come, hmm? misunderstanding come, and ultimately death will come. Oh, uh, not only to the unbeliever, but it rains on the just as well as the unjust, and sometimes death will come so suddenly in our families and upon us. And we sometimes... We can't afford to sit in depression and go there and get into a pity party, huh? And and say that life is not fair and charge God foolishly because Job never charged God foolishly. He said, the Lord give it and the Lord take it away. And he said, blessed be the name of the Lord. So I want to encourage you to still bless the Lord. All oh, glory be to God. David, in that 34th chapter of Psalms, he was going through something. He was running from, all oh, glory be to God. King Saul, he, he would ran from his son that was out to try to overthrow him. He had many enemies that sought his life. But he said, I will bless the Lord. At all times, and his praises, all oh, glory be to God, shall continually be in my mouth. All oh, glory be to God. Hmm? And sometimes your flesh don't feel like boasting, but your soul ought to boast in the Lord. Hmm? Because we're still here in the land of the living. So I want to encourage you and let you know, uh, uh, don't get in that pity party. Hmm? Cause don't nobody call you or didn't, or didn't nobody say no encouraging words, huh? The songwriter says, sometimes you got to encourage yourself. Oh, glory be to God. There is 66 books. Oh, glory be to God. I know we want somebody in the flesh and in the living uh, to encourage us, but we're here today to encourage you and let you know there is 66 books in this Bible hmm, that's full of a words of encouragement. And so we want to encourage the people of God to let you know Job had a hope for the resurrection. And I want to let you know, be encouraged because uh, we got to know. In uh, Corinthians there, he says, if the earthly house of this tabernacle were dissolved, we have another building not made by hand. So we want you to be encouraged hmm? to know that there is a rest unto the people of God. And let me show you how you get this rest. Hmm? Let me show you how we obtain this rest because uh, we, we, we quoted Job, but we want to go to, uh, we're not going to try the scripture reader today because it causes uh, a lot of problems when I'm uh, doing this remotely. So we're going to go uh, to a familiar pastor scripture. And we want to thank God for my pastor, Bishop Murchison, uh, teaching such an eloquent Bible class on last night. And we're going to pick it back up from, uh, some scriptures that he had brought in class that ties right into this subject matter uh, that we're dealing with on this week because there is a rest unto the people of God. And we're in a time where there's a lot of restlessness. You know, people are restless. You know, people are angry. Uh, people are bitter. People are discontented, not only in the world, but in the church, praise God. And we're not saying... It's the church's fault. It's the people's fault because they reject truth. Praise God. And this is what put Israel and Judah in trouble. This is what put the is Israel as a nation in trouble. This is what put uh, the people of God in trouble in the New Testament. 
anytime we reject truth, we're headed for trouble. Praise God. Now let's take a look here. Uh, we want to take a look at it and uh, let's see what we got here. Let's take a look. All right, let's take a look here. All right, let's see here. I hope we can still operate here. Uh, praise the Lord. Okay. All right, so let's take a look here at Isaiah chapter 28. All right. I hope that you uh, uh, can still uh, see and hear us. Praise God. I think something happened here where we're froze up here. Let's see here. I just hope uh, we didn't freeze up here. Well, I think we still should be going. But let's look at Isaiah 28. And we're going to go to verse number 11 and 12. And he says, for with uh, stammering lips and another tongue will I speak. Uh, will he speak to this people rather? So with stammering lips and another tongue, he says here, will he speak to this people? Hmm? To whom he said, this is the rest wherewith ye may cause the weary to rest. And this is the refreshing that they would not hear. All right. And the direct reference of that is Jeremiah 6 and 16 and also Matthew 11, which we talked about on yesterday. All right. On, on, uh, on Monday. But I want to go to uh, 1 Corinthians. I want to go to 1 Corinthians chapter 14. I want to read something there if I can uh, get there swiftly. Uh, 1 Corinthians. And let's see if we can get it for you. Stay with us here. 1 Corinthians 14 and 21. So we're going to start about there. And he says here, brethren, uh, let's see. Uh, yeah, let's look here. In uh, 1 Corinthians 14, 21, he says, In the law it is written, With men other tongues and other lips will I speak unto this people, yet for all that will they not hear me, said the Lord. And so, uh, we at a time now where people are uh, rejecting holiness, teaching. Hmm? And Paul told Timothy to preach the word, to be instant in season, out of season, reprove, rebuke, and exhort with all long suffering and doctrine. Hmm? So it's very important that we continue on with the gospel message, regardless of who rejects and don't accept it. Because there may be somebody out there that says, I want to hear from God. All right? Uh, the way the Corinthians were speaking in tongues was helping no one because the believers did not understand what was being said here in the first Corinthians chapter 14. So they were speaking in tongue and it was not unto edification because it would call it confusion. People didn't know what was going on. Hmm? But speaking in tongues was supposed to be a sign to the unbeliever. Hmm? And this is what people need to know as it was in Acts chapter two, when they heard it noise abroad and they, the unbelievers looked on him and said, these men are drunk. And Peter stood up and the rest of the apostles, and he's, these men are not drunk, hmm? as ye suppose, but this is just a, what? A third hour? Hmm? It's just a third hour of the day. So these, you know, these people are not drunk. And so it's too early for the, you know, people to be drunk. 
Hmm? Ain't no bars, ain't nothing open. So they were kind of really refuting the false idea that the unbeliever was looking on it and it looked as strange to them. Hmm? But they could not deny the fact that these people were speaking in their language. Praise the Lord. And so this was a sign to the unbeliever. I can take you to the Gospels where even the disciples saw the sign. But he said, wasn't going to be no sign given except the sign of Jonah the prophet, where he was going to go. Oh, glory be to God. Jesus was going to be buried three days and three nights and was going to get up. Hmm? He was going to go into the belly. huh? He was going to go into the earth three days and he was going to get up. That was the sign that was given. Oh, glory be to God. So I want to let you know that this was supposed to be a sign to the unbeliever, all right? And speaking in tongues, believers were supposed to explain what was said and give the credit to God because this was not of them because the Bible says uh, we have these treasures and earthly vessels and earthen vessels that the excellency of the power may be of God and not of us. When it's of the Holy Ghost, to God be the glory. No flesh gets any glory. No flesh is to be on display. Praise the Lord. The unsaved people would then be convicted hmm, of a spiritual of a spiritual experience or reality that will motivate them to search, hmm, to soul search, huh? Their faith in God, if they had it or didn't possess it, or if they, oh glory be to God, if they desired it and thirst after it. Jesus said in St. John 7, 37, he said, believe on me as the scripture has said, hmm? and out of your belly shall flow rivers of living water. And so it's very important that, you know, if a person hunger and thirst after righteousness, they shall be filled, according to Matthew uh, 5 and 8. But I, I want to take a look at something here. He says here, uh, while this was one way to reach unbelievers speaking in other tongues. Paul clearly was dealing with the point. Preaching of the gospel is better. Hmm? Because that can be explained through the scriptures. Praise God. Hmm? Huh? And the person can go back and go line upon line. As we go to Isaiah 28, we're going to flip back to Isaiah 28 and we're going to go, uh, to verse number 13. Go to verse number 13. They can go right to the scripture and read it. But the word of the Lord was unto them, precept upon precept, precept upon precept, line upon line, line upon line, here a little and there a little, that they might go and fall backwards and be broken and snared and taken. Hmm? And because... Israel uh, was rejecting uh, God's message. Hmm? They were not going to go unpunished hmm? because God was going to bring them back to him, but they were going to have to suffer some consequences. Hmm? And so I want to let you know, God was just letting them know uh, in this particular passage of Scripture that it was on line upon line, precept upon precept, here a little, there a little. But he had rest for Israel. And sometimes we go through different situations and circumstances that's unnecessary for us to go through. Hmm? When we can just go to the source and get the rest we need, which is in Jesus Christ. Hmm? And you know, the scripture did say, you know, uh, David said, when my heart is heavy, and my heart is overwhelmed, lead me to the rock that's higher than I. The rest is in Jesus. Everything that the world need is in God. But we're seeking, uh, we're seeking a lot of things. We're seeking uh, rest and peace in all of the wrong places. Praise the Lord. And I want to encourage you, uh, those that may want to know the Lord, and a pardon of their sins, want to give their life to Christ, that you can have this rest. Hmm? This rest is not uh, just predicated upon the people of God, but there is a rest unto the people of God. 
because there is no rest for the weary. Hmm? There is no rest for the wicked. I want to let you know. And so it's very important that we, uh, that we understand that the rest is in God. And if we don't get the rest we need, it's because we must analyze and we must look at the fact of, am I rejecting truth? Am I rejecting God? Am I rejecting prayer? Am I, am I rejecting my help? Praise the Lord. And Jesus wanted to help his people. The Bible says he came to his own and his own received him not. And that is something for someone to throw a lifeline out to you and you're drowning. Hmm? You're sinking. Hmm? You're in a situation where you're fighting for your life and someone throw the lifeline out there for you. And you say, I don't even want it. Let me go down in the water. Hmm? Knowing you can't swim. Hmm? That's a lot of pride to have the, the buoy or the line on top of the water where you can reach and grab it and you won't grab it. Hmm? And so this is what pride will do. Hmm? God had told uh, some people in the Old Testament, he said, the pride of your heart have deceived thee, thou who dwelleth in the cleft of the rock. Sometimes people pride, they get so high up on their horse and they say, who going to bring me down? <laughs> hmm? I want to get myself I want to get myself on my knees, on my face, and if I need to repent, I'm going to repent, praise God, because I don't want to get, oh, glory be to God, I don't want to be left without the rest that God promised me. Praise God. And so we we know there's a rest unto the people of God. And so let us go back to another scripture. We're going to go to Hebrews chapter 3 real quick, and then we're going to let you go. We're going to Hebrews chapter 3. I want to read something for you. Uh, let's go to Hebrews chapter 3, and then we'll skip over to chapter 4. So stay with me in the same book as I encourage you. Uh, and uh, we, we're going to talk here for a minute. Uh, so we're going to stay here uh, just for a moment to uh, explain something. We'll start at uh, Hebrews 3 and 7. All right. Hebrews chapter 3, uh, verse number 7. And so we're going to we're going to keep it there. We're going to go to Hebrews chapter three, verse number seven. All right. So let's take a look here. All right. So let's take a look. He says here in Hebrews three and seven, he says, wherefore, as the Holy Ghost said today, if ye will hear his voice, harden not your heart as in the provocation in the day of the temptation. In the wilderness, when your fathers tempted me, proved me, and saw my works for 40 years. Let me show you how pride works. Saw his works for 40 years. Wherefore, I was grieved with that generation and said, they do always err in their heart hmm? and have not gone and have not known my ways, rather, and have not known my ways. So I swear in my wrath, they shall not enter into my rest. I do not want to be under grace and truth, my friend, saints of God, people of God, listeners, viewers, subscribers. I do not want to be in the church on my way to hell. Hmm? And I'm telling you, we need to be careful in these last and evil days because that seems to be the theme of society today. You got people in religion, but no relationship whatsoever with God. They're bankrupt. And I see a lot of things transpiring. You see people, they'll go through great lengths to get to the church, but the pride in them won't let them get down on their knees and call on Jesus. Hmm? Oh, glory be to God. They will make their way all the way to church. And I'm not talking about nobody, but I'm just laying it out there for what my, oh, for what I've witnessed myself personally. You got people, they'll come all the way to the house of God. 
but they will not get on the altar and call on the name of Jesus. Hmm? And I'll tell you this, my friend, since we here, we might as well praise him. Glory. <laughs> Hallelujah. Since I made it to the house of God, I might as well get on my face and call on his name. Praise God. Hmm? I want to encourage you. And so I want to encourage and motivate all the people of God. Hey, there is a rest. And we don't want to be like the previous church. And I'm talking about Israel. Hmm? The first church <laughs> that was in the wilderness. Hmm? It was a type of church, y'all. But to make a long story short, they vexed God. Because hmm? they rejected what he was giving Moses to give unto them. Oh, glory be to God. Hmm? And we don't want to be in a time now where the word of God, when it's shared and given to us to get us closer to God, that we get mad with the preacher. We get mad with the, with the person that's delivering the truth to us. Hmm? And I'll never see nobody. It's a, it's, it's, it's a federal crime. <laughs> and I'm, I'm talking about naturally so now. It's a federal crime for you to attack the postmaster, the postman. Hmm? And I won't let you know the preacher is nothing more than the postman. God is the one that's, oh, glory be to God. He's getting the mail and he's telling us to give it to you. Praise the Lord. And so I won't let you know, don't shoot the messenger. Hmm? Praise God. I'm just the person that put it in your mailbox. Praise the Lord. Now, you, I ain't going to make you read it. I ain't going to make you open it. But I'm just delivering what's in my hands to deliver. Praise God. I can't make you be saved. I'm not God. I can't put you in heaven. And I can't put you in hell. But if you die without the Lord in your life, oh, glory be to God, there will be a rest unto the people of God. And there is no rest for the wicked. Oh, glory be to God. Oh, I got to get out of here, y'all. Hmm? There is no rest for the wicked, but there is rest unto the people of God. And I want to invite you and encourage you to come on over here. Oh, glory be to God. Come on over here where the table is spread and the feast of the Lord is going on. Oh, yeah, you, I'm telling you, it don't matter how long you've been out there and what you done done and how long you done done it. You can tell them that once you get the Holy Ghost, you can tell, oh, you can tell them, oh, glory be to God. You can come on in and tell me to move over and pass you the bowl of collard greens and all oh, glory be to God and the potato salad and the sweet potato. Oh, glory be to God. Hmm? Because you can have everything that God promised in his word. Praise God. And so I want to encourage you and let you know that there is room at the cross for you. But I want to let you know that the rest is for the people of God. And you know what? You can have this rest. Hmm? And the only way I could get the rest, oh, I had to, I had to repent of my sins, y'all. I had to, I had to come and acknowledge that I was a sinner. Acknowledgement, confession is made unto salvation when the person repents, when they hear the word of God and understand that I have offended God. I'd offended my brother, my sister, and I'm godly sorrow. Hmm? which causes that person to change. Repentance means to go in a different direction, not the same direction. Oh, somebody shall glory. And you know what? When you turn, you're going to turn away from the wrongdoing and you're going to turn toward a righteous God that's able to save and blot out your sins. Praise God. And once you repent and submit to being baptized in water in Jesus' name, for the removal, for the remission of those sins, God promised to give you the rest. Oh, glory be to God. There is a rest unto the people of God. And if you don't have the Holy Ghost, glory, you don't have the rest I'm talking about. Praise God. Hmm? And once you receive the Holy Ghost, it'll lead and guide you in all, all truth. I want to go to one other scripture here. Uh, I want to go to uh, St. John chapter 14. And then we're going to get Hebrews chapter 4, and we out of here. I want to go to St. John chapter 14. I want to let you know the rest you can have is called the comforter. And we're going to read it for you. Hmm? Let's take a look at it. And I got more scripture for you. I got plenty more scripture, but I, 
I can't be here all day. So I'm going to share, hit and miss, and and, and uh, we're going to hit and touch and go here. All right? And so we're going to take a look here. And uh, uh, St. John chapter uh, 14. And we're going to go uh, to uh, verse number 15. And then we're going to skip down to 23. All right, let's take a look. All right. St. John 14 and 15. And then we're going to skip down to 23. All right. Same book. He says, if ye love me, keep my commandments. And I will pray the father. And he shall give you another comforter. Mm -hmm. And that he may abide with you forever. Even the spirit of truth, whom the world cannot receive. Oh, glory be to God. I can spend some time on this, but I got to go. Even when the spirit of truth has come, whom the world cannot receive. The world can't receive this. Hmm? Because he said in Matthew 11, he said, I thank thee, O Father, Lord of heaven and of earth, for thou hast hid these things from the wise and the prudent. Oh, glory be to God. And had revealed them unto babes. Praise God. Hmm? You got to be humble to receive this, hmm? to get this rest. Hmm? Oh, glory be to God. God will give you beauty for ashes. Oh, glory be to God. I got to go. I'm feeling good today. Look at this. He says, because it seared him not. Nicodemus had to humble himself and he come to Jesus by night and he had to acknowledge no man can do these things except God. No man can do these miracles except God be with them. All glory be to God. Huh? You cannot see the revelation of Jesus Christ till you get off your high horse. Hmm? Look at this. He says, because it seeth him not, neither knoweth him. They thought they knew God because they had the Jewish law. They thought they knew God. Oh, you can go back to Romans chapter one. You can see it in the church. When And when they knew God, they glorified him not as God. We can be going in a form, but deny the power thereof. Glory be to God. And I won't let you know you can be sitting on the pews on your way to hell. Oh, I know I got to go. You can be sitting in the chairs on your way to, oh, the lake of fire. But I'm here to encourage you and let you know there is a rest. Oh, hashamatia. Glory to God. There is a rest. Hallelujah. There is a rest. And you know what? I'm excited about this rest. Hmm? Because I know it's not only to me. When Paul went off the scene, he let Timothy know. He said, I fought a good fight. I finished my course. I kept the faith. Hmm? Oh, glory be to God. And there's a crown of righteous laid up, not for me only, but for them that love is appearing. Do you love is appearing? Because if you love is appearing, there is a rest unto the people of God. I got to get out of here. Let me get out of here. Look at this. He says here, he says, neither knoweth him, but ye know him. For he dwelleth with you and shall be in you. Oh, glory be to God. This rest I'm talking about, you need to have on the inside. Hmm? He said, peace I give unto you, not as the world give I unto you. Oh, glory be to God. Huh? I want the rest to be on the inside. Hmm? So when, oh, glory be to God, when I'm, when I'm feeling low, oh, glory be to God, the Holy Ghost can take me in the overflow. Oh, glory be to God. When I'm feeling down, oh, glory be to God, I got the comforter to lift me up. Oh, glory be to God. Oh, I thank the Lord for his mercy and his grace. Thank you, Lord. Let's skip on down here to 23. Jesus answered and said unto him, if a man love me, the question is, do you love him? Because when you love him, God will not allow you to be restless. Oh, glory be to God. He will keep my words. He go back then, he go back to it again. If you love him, you're going to keep his commandments. Huh? And there will, his rest will abide there. Oh, glory be to God. Because wherever his commandments are, there's rest there. Oh, let me get out of here. I got to go. And my father will love him. Oh, glory be to God. I feel the love of God. Mm, glory to God. 
I know when you sitting there alone and ain't nobody to talk to you, ain't nobody to ministry, the Holy Ghost, hmm? which all oh, glory make intercession for the saints. Oh, glory be to God. Hmm? I thank God for the Holy Ghost. Huh? When won't nobody else talk, the Holy Ghost will talk. Praise the Lord. Look at this. He says here, and my father will love him and we will come unto him and make our bowl with him. Hmm? And he that loveth me not, I'm sorry, he that loveth me not, keep not my sayings, and the word which ye hear is not mine. Hmm? Which ye hear is not mine, but the Father's which sent me. He said, the word which ye hear is not mine, but the Father which sent me. So Jesus giving them words of encouragement at this time. At verse number 25, he says, these things have I spoken unto you, being present with you. Jesus was going off the scene. And you know, that sets some discouragement into the hearts of the apostles, the disciples. They were discouraged. They didn't want their Lord and Master to leave them. But he said, if I don't go, look at this here. He says, but the comforter, which is the Holy Ghost, whom the Father will send in my name, he shall teach you all things and bring all things to your remembrance, whatsoever I've said unto you. Peace I leave with you. My peace give I unto you, not as the world give it, give I unto you. Let not your heart be troubled and neither be afraid. And I want to let you know that saints, be encouraged and don't be afraid because we're not the ones that are afraid of death. Death is not a terror to the saints. I got to let you know, I want to encourage the saints of God. Hmm? I'm on my way home. I don't know about you. huh? I'm going, oh, don't you want to go to that land hmm? where Jesus is? I want to let you know because hmm? I know we not going to stay here and we wasn't, we wasn't built to stay. Hmm? But Jesus already, God had already laid it out when Adam sinned. Hmm? From the dust you was created, and from the dust thou shalt return. So I want to let you know, be encouraged. Don't be discouraged because the doctor give you what they seem to be bad news. But all news ain't bad news. Hmm? Because if he, if he tell me I'm checking out of here, then I just need to make sure my house is in order. Hmm? I'm not going to be, oh, glory be to God. Yeah, one thing that we don't want to do because we're bonded and tied in this flesh to one another. Flesh craves flesh. We don't want to leave our loved ones behind. Hmm? That's the only despair and the only thing that we would have to overcome. Hmm? We don't want to leave, you know, we don't want to leave our loved ones. I don't want to, oh, glory be to God. I don't want to leave my wife. I don't want to leave my bishop. Hmm? I won't lead the saints, praise God. But if God say I got to go, I got to make sure I got that comforter. Praise God. Because hmm? if I got that comforter, oh, glory be to God. Hmm? I can go on with the Lord. Praise God. Hmm? Because I know there's a rest. Oh, glory be to God unto the people of God. Hmm? But I won't let you know the world don't have this hope. And the world's looking for rest. People that's in the world, they need rest and they want this rest. And God has loved the world so much so that he gave his only begotten son that we can come out the rain. Hmm? We can come out the storms of life and have rest in God. Hmm? Even though life is going on, chaos is still going on and the world still got trouble all around us. We in the world, but we're not of the world. But guess what? I got rest in Jesus. Praise God. Hmm? I'm not telling you uh, it rained on the just, it was unjust, but I'm telling you I got to rest. Because God promised me. Hmm? Jesus promised he'll take care of me. The young people sing a song. They say, oh, how marvelous it is. Oh, glory be to God. I got the promises of God over my life and Jesus promised that he'll take care of me. 
And if if we being evil know how to give our children good gifts, how much more your father, your heavenly father, huh? know how to give good gifts to them hmm? that love him. Praise the Lord. And I won't let you know. He says, peace leave I with you. My peace give I unto you, not as the world give it I unto you. Let not your heart be troubled, neither let it be afraid. Praise God. Huh? I want to let you know there is a rest unto the people of God. I'm going to read my final scripture and we got to let you go. And we right on time here. We're going to close out right at one o'clock. Let's go to Hebrews 4 and let's go to Hebrews uh, 4 and 4. Well, let's go. Yes, let's go to Hebrews 4 and and. Uh, Yeah, let's go to uh, four and one through eight. We're going to read eight verses real quick. He says, let us therefore fear, lest a promise being left us of entering into his rest, any of you should seem to come short of it. For unto us was the gospel preached as well as unto them, but the word preached did not profit them, not being mixed with faith in them that heard it. Hmm? I like to go to John 12, but I ain't got time about rejecting the word. But look, he says here, for we which have believed do enter into rest, as he said, as I have sworn in my wrath, if they shall enter into my rest, although the works were finished from the foundation of the world. For he spake in a certain place, of the seventh day on this wise, and God did rest the seventh day from all his works. Hmm? And in this place again, if they shall enter into my rest, hmm? seeing therefore it remaineth that some must enter therein, and they too whom it was first preached entered not in because of unbelief. Hmm? The only thing that will stop you from receiving this rest is unbelief. Hmm? Take a look at this. It stopped Israel and it will stop you. Hmm. Again, verse 7, Hebrews 4 and 7. Again, he limited a certain day saying in David, today, after so long a time, as it is said, Today, if you will hear his voice and harden not your hearts, don't harden your heart. For if Jesus has given them rest, hmm? for if Jesus had given them rest, then he would not afterward have spoken of another day. There remain it, therefore a rest unto the people of God. And for he that has entered into his rest, he also has ceased from his own works as God did from his. Hmm? Let us labor. Therefore, enter into the rest, lest any man fall after the same example of unbelief. And I want to let you know, we do not want to fall into unbelief in a time like this. Keep holding, keep believing, keep trusting. Younger saints as well as the older saints, there's a rest unto the people of God. And I want to let you know, Jesus promised he'll take care of you. And I want to let you know, be encouraged. Uh, stay over here on the Lord's side. Uh, keep fighting. Keep working. Hmm? And keep laboring um, for the Lord Jesus Christ. I want to let you know. He says in uh, Ephesians 4 and verse number 1, he said, I beseech you that you walk worthy of the vocation where would you call with all lowliness, meekness, and long suffering for bearing one another in love, endeavoring to keep the unity of the spirit in the bonds of peace. Keep working saints because there is a rest unto the people of God. And these are the faithful words of elder Newsom, the faith in God in that TV broadcast. We want to say God bless you today. And again, we want to thank you for joining us on today. 
Um, we do have some more information and things of that nature for you. And so if you'd like to stay with us, uh, please do so. Um, please do so. Stay with us so we can uh, provide to you uh, some more information. But I just wanted to uh, encourage the people of God to let them know that there is a rest for the people of God. And so I have nothing else at this time. We do have our uh, brotherhood annual, our local brotherhood annual coming up. Uh, the Pentecostal Power Church Milwaukee Brotherhood Annual starting this Friday at 7 p.m. and on Sunday at 4 p.m. So if you desire to join us, please come out and join us in those particular services. All right. And so we have nothing else so far to do. So we're going to say God bless you. We love you. May God bless you in Jesus name. Uh, I just need to uh, make sure that we're able to uh, move forward in the uh, next thing that we got here. All right. God bless you in Jesus name. 